Okay, welcome back. So, so far we've learned how to do if statements, uh, but now let's take a look at compound if statements. So essentially, a compound if statement is when you have if, and then you have you know some condition, right? And um, but how do you do multiple uh, conditions? So you have. In Python, you'd use the word and, A-N-D. So the corresponding um, way to do that in C++ is using two ampersands. So th that is C++, right? And in, in Python, right, this would be an, an and. And obviously for an or, you'd have your condition and then instead of going OR you'd go two vertical lines. Now the two vertical lines are uh, the key just above the enter it's a vertical line in Linux sometimes it's called the pipe so in this way that is the OR. Okay so everything else though is the same right greater than uh, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to, not equal to, those are all the same, except the and and the or are different. So the and is two ampersands back to back, and the or is two vertical lines back to back. Oh yeah, right, I actually forgot one, and that is the equivalence, so equals equals is the same as Python also. Okay, so there is another thing which I kind of should have gone over, and that is, in in Python you can actually say something like if uh, not, and then you know have your condition. Although you don't need brackets, this is not C plus plus. So the question is, how do you do this in C plus plus? The answer is, you go if ampersand like that, and and so then. Um, the amp the, sorry did I say ampersand exclamation mark the exclamation mark takes the place of not okay it's it, it's actually pretty consistent if you think about it because not equal to right is exclamation mark equal to so in this case if you want the inverse of your com of of the boolean type of the comparison of whatever you have in here right so for example something like you know uh, is five less than four well that's that's false five is greater than four but if you go not it is it's going to be true okay so that's the not in C++ okay so the next thing I want to go over is just the introduction of the syntax of the while loop so a while loop in C++ syntax basically looks like you type in while and then you have some condition and then you have your block of code and you close your brace and that's about it so in here you can have anything that evaluates to true or false in fact you could even if you wanted to have just a while true loop um, you could type in true remember it's got to be uh, all lowercase, no capital uh, like it is in Python for the first letter. In addition, um, right, the break and continue are exactly the same as in Python as well, right? So this exits the loop and continue will uh, skip the rest of the loop okay so you don't um, obviously you right one of my pet peeves is uh, is people who put continue at the end of their loop when it's completely unnecessary right continue should actually have code after it so that it can actually skip over something if the you know, you could have an if statement in there and check to see a, for a condition, and if it's true, you could skip the rest of, uh, of the while loop. Now, there is another type of a 
while loop in C++. So let's take a look at that. Okay. So the way this works is you type in do. So after the, after the word do, you have your opening brace and you have your code. And then afterwards, you have your closing bracket. And then you have your while statement with your condition. But here's one difference that is like a bit of a, a catch. You actually need a semicolon here. So notice that, so if I move this, if I move this up here, notice that this in this while statement, there was no semicolon anywhere, uh, except, you know, obviously at the end of um, your, uh, your block of code, your statements inside, of course, that they would need semicolons. But there's no semicolon. In fact, if you put a semicolon here at the end of the while statement, it's a complete, um, it's, it's utterly wrong because the while statement, the while loop won't do anything. In other words, it'll be like th this is the end. So never do that. Never put the, the semicolon at the, after, at the end of the while statement in this format. However, okay, I think I fixed that now. So notice though in the do while, okay, you need your semicolon at the end of the while. So what's the difference between these two, right? Well, the difference is that in this, in this example here of the while loop, if this condition here ends up being false, okay, then you will never enter the loop, okay? However, so the loop will be completely skipped, not, not even executing one time, okay? However, if this condition ends up being false, then the loop will execute at least one time. So if you, if you want a, a, a situation, let's say for example, you know, if you're going to be asking a question and you, want, and, and you need to repeat that question, let's say in here, and your while loop is gonna be based upon the response of that question, here's an example, then you wanna ask the question at least once, then you could use a do while loop. The other possibility, right, obviously you can use either method, right, is you would then ha perhaps have to ask the question out here, and then ask the question in here again if you're gonna repeat the question. In this way, you're going to have to have a little bit of code duplication because you'll have to ask the question before the while loop and inside the while loop. Because if the condition here is dependent upon their response, then, then this will have to exist before the while loop starts and so you'll have to ask, you'll have to kind of ask the question or, I mean, it doesn't have to be a question, it could be anything, right? It could be from uh, input from a file, who knows? But my point is, in this situation, uh, you, you would only need it inside because it's going to enter at least once and, and if the question ends up being false, then it won't continue. Okay? So there's, there's the two forms of, the, of the, uh, the while loop. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to go over is the, is the switch structure. So, interestingly, Python doesn't have switch because you can do anything uh, that you can do a switch with if-then ladders. However, it's important to, be, to understand this because if you're reading other people's code or perhaps you want to utilize it yourself, it's nice to know how to use this. Uh, so for example, switch will only work with uh, integers or uh, character data types. Uh, and also, I think, yeah, it will work with Booleans too, but usually you wouldn't use it with a Boolean. So it has to be uh, an integral data type. Now, why does it work with chars? Because chars internally are integers anyways. So let's say, for example, you know you had um, C in X, and then you had, you know, let's say the user type is gonna type in something like a, uh, an A or a B or a C. So you would have, 
uh, switch, and then you'd have a bracket x. So now you would uh, open your brace. Okay, so now you can put it here or there, but I'm going to put it here. And now you can say case, and you would say a. And now you'd have full colon. Okay. You need to have a full colon at the end. And then you would have your block of code. Okay, so uh, here's your block of code. And then at the end of your block of code, you would have break. And then you would have your next one. Okay, so that would be like case B, and you'd have break at the end of that. And, and then obviously you could have more of them. But at the very end, if you want, you can, you can put uh, default. And then you could do something if none of the other ones uh, worked out, or if none of the other ones were true. So the last uh, one, which is the default one, which, which you don't have to have, it's optional, but if, if you do, you don't necessarily need the break on this one, and then of course you would have your closing brace there. So that's the format um, of the switch and you can have as many cases as you like. And they don't have to be, like I said, they don't have to be uh, chars. They could be ints, okay? You could go, you know, one, two, three, or something like that. Uh, but they can't be floating point types or, or, uh, or strings, okay? There is something I should mention with uh, switch, and that is you can have multiple cases so you could have, for example, case uh, A, and you could have case B, and then you could have a block code. So in other words, if it was either one of these two, this code here is going to get executed. Okay, and then you could have your break here. So in other words, they, you could have a situation where you could say, okay, if it's either this or that, then do this. And that's, that's the way uh, to accomplish that using the switching case. Okay, so the next topic today, we're getting right into the meat of the language here, is for loops. How does a for loop work? Well, you would type in for, and now you have a bracket, and now you have what's called your initialization. I'm just going to use the word init here. I mean, that, that's not part of, but I'm just, just to describe it. Then you have a uh, semicolon, and then you have your condition here, and then you have a semicolon, and then you have uh, your modifier. Oops, M-O-D, I, I messed that up. So what does that look like? Well. Here is an example. You could have int. That's not init. Int means integer. X equals zero. Okay. Semicolon. And then you could say while X is less than 10, semicolon X plus plus. So what this loop would do, so in here now, what do you have? You have your brace. And then, for example, you could have C out X end line. So, and then let's close the brackets. So, essentially, what you have here is you are creating or you're creating and initializing, you need, you need brackets, right? A variable called X, which is an integer, okay? And its initial value is going to be 0, and this is 10. Now this loop is going to execute while x is less than 10, 
So it's, you know, it's going to go uh, from 0 to 9. And x plus plus will increment x by 1 every time. So x plus plus is the same as saying x equals x plus 1. This and this are, are the same thing. In fact, um, you could even replace x plus plus with plus plus x, and that'll work too. Uh, we'll get into the specifics of how they're slightly different, but in this case, they're exactly the same. They're going to work exactly the same way. Um, now, we could actually rewrite this loop using a while loop like this. We could say, so let's just draw a line here and let's let's redo this loop using a while loop. I could say int x equals 0. Okay, Then I would say while and then I would say uh, x is less than 10. Okay, And then I would have my uh, bracket here, and then I would say C out x endl, and then I would say x equals x plus 1. Okay, and there you go. And so this, this while loop would behave exactly the same as this for loop. See? Um, I should mention something here, and that is that this variable that we've created here, um, right here, the int x here, this is actually the scope of that variable x is only for the for loop. Okay? So if we try to. Um, print out or you know access x after this for loop it's going to say um, you know I, I i don't know what, what x are you talking about so however on the other hand right in this in this ex in this while loop this x is going to uh, exist after the while loop finishes now we can do the same thing as well um, like this by going, for example, you could do int x equals 0. And then you could say 4. And then you could go bracket. And now you can, but oh, actually, we don't need to say equals 0 here. Actually, let me start this again. Uh, let's just move it over a bit. Actually, here, let's just cross it out. Let's go int x. So don't initialize it. Just declare it. And now go for bracket. And then in here, you could say x equals 0, bracket, while x is less than 10, uh, semicolon, and then x plus plus. So what's the difference? And so you know, like now you could have your code again, block of code, and close off your for loop. So what's the difference between this and this? And the difference is here, x is going to exist after the for loop. In this case, in the, on the right hand side, it's not. Okay, So we're specifically utilizing x only for the for loop as the index um, to iterate through. And on the left hand side, we're still using x to, to, to iterate through 0 to 9. But uh, after we're done, um, x is going to end up being, I think, 10. But it, that's going to be after the loop is finished. OK? But x will still exist after the loop on, on this left example. OK, so uh, a pitfall right, in a for loop is if you write a for loop and you have some initial uh, declaration initial value, semicolon, and some condition, and some modification, and you close the bracket. If you forget, as a new C++ programmer, and put a semicolon here, 
this is really bad because essentially now it doesn't matter what you have inside your for loop what'll happen is it's essentially as if you typed in nothing here so so what this signifies is that's the end of the for loop uh, simply iterate however many times but do nothing and so don't ever put a semicolon at the end of the for loop uh, after the closing bracket. Okay, so this next issue or thing you'd like to do is remember you can use break and continue uh, in a for loop just like you can in a while loop. In some ways while loops and for loops are kind of interchangeable. However, what if you want to make an infinite loop, all right? Like in Python you could say while true. Well, in C++ you can also do while true uh, you could do this, but um, interestingly, that is not as common, I would say, as this way of writing while true. You go while one, and now you have your block. And now in here somewhere, obviously, you're going to have to have a break or you're really going to have an info. So you'd have like an if statement and you'd have your break somewhere in there. Of, of course, you know, we've done this many times in, um, in Python. However, just so that you know, okay, it's also possible to have an infinite loop using a for loop and you would just go for with two semicolons inside the for and now you have your infinite loop, and obviously you would need another if break in here as well. Now, personally, if I had to choose between these three infinite loops, which one would I choose for C++? I'd choose the middle one. Um, while one is, I would think, the most commonly used version of an infinite loop. Um, so. But there's nothing wrong with the other ones. Personally, I would probably stay away from four uh, semicolon, semicolon, just because I think it's less readable. It's like kind of scratch your head and go, you know, why would you do that when you can just use a while loop, which I think looks more readable. Now, the one thing I wanted to show you with four loops here is I've made an array. And we've, we've discussed arrays before. Here's an initialization list for the array. In other words, I'm setting an array of uh, four integers. And I'm initializing them when I declare it. And then I'm going to go use a for loop. And this is the typical old, C, you know, this is the regular C++ way of iterating through something, whatever it is, an array, a vector, doesn't matter. We'll learn vectors later on. But you would say, here's my, here's my for loop. I'm saying, OK, here's my x is my, um, my for variable. And I'm saying, while it's less than 4, increase x by 1, um, and then print it out, ax. Notice, I have, to type, I have to type in square brackets here. Okay, So what am I iterating over? I'm iterating over the indices 0 to 3. And I'm printing out the elements of the array by accessing them with the square brackets, each one. Okay, You can do this in Python as well. However, in Python, you can also iterate directly over the items in the container, in this case, the array. And you can do that in C++11. Uh, onward as well using the auto keyword. So in this case, we're saying for auto x a. So in this it, I mean it's a lot it's a lot simpler looking, okay? But essentially what you're doing is you're saying basically make x the items in a one at a time. And so in this case, notice when we print it out, we're not doing ax, we're just saying x. And when we run this, okay, here's the, the, the it, it's exactly the same. We run this and boom, 
we're going to get, um, so there's the code and there's the output. We're going to get the same output using both for loops. Um, it's just different ways of iterating over something. Okay? So here is another example. In this situation, uh, we're using uh, a character array instead of integers. And I've got the string hello world initialized. Notice how the initialization is different from the integer uh, one that I used in the previous example. So notice this, this I'm actually using uh, double quotes here to initialize it. And before, remember, I was using uh, braces with commas for the integers. Also, just wanted to point out that in this one, C++ will recognize the variable s as a, uh, as a C string. And it is able to print it out. So I just thought I'd show that uh, functionality. Now, in terms of actually iterating through the letters, notice I can iterate through the letters like this. Also, notice here that I'm using uh, str len s. Now, what does that do? So I've had to include C string uh, library in order to access this function. And basically, what it does is it'll look for the, uh, the null byte or the null character, which is terminates uh, C strings. Now, notice here, right, that hello world is 11 characters, and but my uh, but my character array holds 12. Well, that last one, I'm, I'm utilize that for the, uh, for the null byte, um, which is like backslash 0. And uh, str len will actually look for that, and then it'll say, OK, that's the end of the string. So it's slightly different than, for example, the, the size of the array. So that's a little different. Because if I was to increase this, right, to like something like, you know, 122 or something, SCR len is only going to go up to uh, the first 11 characters. But that's, that's besides the point right now. What I'm trying to teach at this point is um, for loops. And so here, when I'm going C out in this example, I'm printing out each letter one at a time. Notice I don't have end line at the end here, but I have end line after printing out all the letters. Now, the second way I'm going to iterate through the letters in this case is using the auto keyword. Uh, and in this case, I'm saying x is not the integer but you know of the indices of the array, but rather it is the letters themselves. So I'm automatically iterating over the C string S, and X will be each letter. And notice here, I'm not printing SX, but rather just X. So when I run this, uh, you'll notice that I will get uh, a warning okay, because of my comparison here, but that's not important. I'm getting Hello World printed out three times. Okay, so that's that's what's important here. Hello world gets printed out here, and here, and uh, sorry, not there. Let me start again. It, Hello world gets printed out here, and then once in this for loop, and then once by this for loop. So that was that's the end of this example I wanted to provide. So you know, for loops, uh, while loops. Uh, Hope you enjoyed the lesson.